I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Before we get started in today's show, I wanted to let you know about an important change that's going to be happening with Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Starting with today's show and every show going forward, if you want to leave a comment about the show, the only place you're going to be able to do that is on my website, MrSaltwaterTank.com. I still want to hear your thoughts on the show, so to leave your comments, again, MrSaltwaterTank.com. With that being said, let's get started. Controlling nitrates is one of the most common problems when keeping a saltwater tank, and controlling them is a bit of a reactive and a proactive process as well. So today I'm going to talk to you about what nitrates are, why they're important, and show you how to control them. And I'll show you how to do that from a, both a proactive and a reactive process at the same time. So with that, let's get started. Before we can talk about reducing nitrates, we have to understand what they are. Nitrates are the last step in the nitrogen cycle that turns toxic fish and other waste from ammonia into nitrites and finally into the least toxic nitrates. Nitrates are the least toxic of these compounds, but they can still be very harmful to fish and corals at even moderate levels. They can cause corals to turn brown and die, and they can cause fish to die as well. High nitrates? Bad news for your tank. By far the biggest cause for high nitrates is either a young tank that doesn't have the biological filtration to support the fish in it, or poor tank husbandry. That would be an overstocked tank, a tank that doesn't have enough rock in it, an overfed tank, or a tank that gets rare or no water changes. Managing your tank's nitrates is both a proactive and a reactive process, but you want to be on the proactive side as much as possible. Don't get me wrong, sometimes you have to be reactive in managing your tank's nitrates. For example, let's say you tested your tank's parameters and you notice that your nitrates are very high. This would be above 10, say, for a uh, mixed reef tank or above 20 for a fish only tank. If you see that, you're gonna wanna do a water change to help knock those nitrates back down. The problem with this approach is that you have to do a very large water change to actually make a dent in those nitrate levels. So, it's not gonna make sense for you to be doing a 50% water change every couple days as a way of managing your tank's nitrates. That would be an example of being reactive. And also another example of being reactive would be if you added things like denitrate reactors. Besides being big and bulky and oftentimes very expensive, you're not getting to the root of the problem about why your tank's nitrates are high. If you were taking that approach, then you would be on the proactive side of things, which is where we wanna be when it comes to dropping your tank's nitrates. So what are some examples of proactive approaches? Well, things like this. Only feeding your fish enough food that they can eat in one to two minutes. Doing regular water changes. Going plus one on your skimmer. Using a refugium that contains macroalgae that will eat the excess nitrates in your tank. Having a good cleanup crew to eat excess food and fish waste. Patience, waiting for your tank to mature biologically so that it supports the fish that you have in it. Open rock work. Here's one that most people don't think of. When most people aquascape their tanks, the rocks are packed together so tightly that water cannot easily flow through and around the rocks. Most tanks are aquascaped to look like, as my friend Rick says, Jeez, it looked like I just dumped it out of a bucket. This means that there are lots of dead spots, pockets of areas where water can't flow, where excess food and excess fish waste will accumulate. This food and waste has to break down, and when it does, it's going to create nitrates. Your rock work should be open and allow for water to easily flow through and around rocks. The last way to manage nitrates in your tank is to carbon dose. Carbon dosing is a whole ball of wax, so I'm not going to cover it in this video. But I will say this, if you're considering carbon dosing, you absolutely have to go plus one on your skimmer. And don't use it as an excuse to be lazy. Just because you can add a liquid or a pellet to your tank and have your nitrates go to zero, doesn't mean your husbandry should fall off. There's one fact that if you don't keep it in mind, it will really drive you nutty when it comes to controlling your tank's nitrates. And that fact is that it's a multi-pronged approach. That means there's no server bullet when it comes down to dropping your tank's nitrates. Okay, I take that back. If you took all the fish out of your tank, at which point it wouldn't be very interesting to look at your tank because there's no fish in it, then you wouldn't have a nitrate problem. But part of the reasons that we all got a tank is to enjoy the fish in it. So we'll throw that one out the window. So when you go to look at your tank's nitrates and lowering your tank's nitrates, you gotta look at it from a multi-pronged approach. 
you might have to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that to get those nitrates down where you want them. For example, you might have to open up your rock work and reduce your bio load. That would be taking some fish out of your tank to get them down. And at the same time, you might have to do some water changes and pull back your feeding. So don't drive yourself crazy by looking for the silver bullet because it just doesn't exist. It's always better to take a proactive approach as opposed to a reactive approach to maintaining your nitrates. And with proper husbandry techniques, you really shouldn't have a nitrate problem in your saltwater tank. And let's face it, at the end of the day, if your nitrates are very, very low, but still detectable, and everything looks great in your tank, don't worry about it. Your tank's telling you that everything's in balance, it's okay with it, and everything's thriving. Now, certainly if you ever see your nitrates creep up, then you know you need to go back and look at how you're maintaining your saltwater tank. That's it for this edition of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. Remember, if you want to leave me comments or ask me questions, the only place you can do that from now on is on my website, mrsaltwatertank.com. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality.